What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this video, we're gonna build something that I'm calling YouTube with friends. Basically, we're gonna use WebRTC to build a video chat application that's gonna allow two people to watch YouTube with each other. Sounds pretty cool, right? All right, so before we actually jump into the code, let me just point out a few things. Number one, if you'd like to follow along, you can find a link to the starter files on GitHub. You can find a link to that down in the description box below. Also, if you're not already familiar with WebRTC and kind of setting up a video chat application using WebRTC, I've actually already made a video on that. You can find a link to that video down in the description box below because I'm not going to be spending too much time on the actual sort of video chat part of this application since all that code's kind of already been built. And also, if you're not already familiar with Sakura.io, I actually have a video about that as well where I'm basically setting up a React chat application using Sakura.io. So with all that out of the way, let's actually take a look at the code that we have so far and then we can kind of get into building our application. So the two files that are kind of relevant to us are going to be, the first one is going to be server.js which lives in the root of the application. This is the one that kind of has all of our Sakura.io logic of actually signaling between the peers to kind of create that handshake for the sake of the actual video chat application. Uh, and then in the room uh, room file, this one lives uh, in the client folder under source on the routes. We have a file called room.js. This is the one that right now has the actual logic for the um, actually setting up the peer-to-peer -peer connection between the two people for them to be able to have a video chat application. And this is where we're going to be writing our code to actually set up the whole YouTube uh, part of it. So they'll actually watching YouTube with somebody else. So we have so far very simply is we're basically getting the permission of the user to kind of, you know, get their audio and video streams. We're taking the stream, we're appending it to the video object. We're then handling all the socket events of actually signaling the other user, accepting the signal, returning our signal, just kind of, you know, creating that handshake. We're creating a peer. In other words, this is the caller peer. This is the uh, the call lead peer because here we're setting initiated to true. Here we're setting initiated to false. And then down here in our JSX so far, we're basically rendering the two video tags. We're rendering the one that, you know, is the actual user. And then also the partner video, that's the one that we're obviously going to be rendering the incoming stream from the person who we're currently in the video chat with them. Okay, so now that we've actually gotten a little bit more acquainted with the code so far, let's start building this application. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've done so far. Basically, we created a new use effect. We're creating a new tag where, where we're calling document.createElement, passing in the script, so we're not effectively creating a new script tag. We're then setting the source of that tag to be equal to this URL. So this is the actual sort of library code that we need to actually have within our scope to be able to use the uh, YouTube Player API. We're then going to go ahead and find the first script tag, and then we're basically going to go ahead and insert this tag above that tag. And then finally, we're setting this property on our window object. We're basically saying on YouTube iframe, I API ready when this tag is effectively loaded go ahead and call this load video player function which we've defined right down over here and then what we're basically doing is we're creating a new player by calling this new window that YouTube that player constructor we're passing in the ID of where that player is gonna sit so basically down here inside of this right row uh, component we're basically gonna be creating a div that's gonna have an ID of player that's what this player here represents giving it some basic dimensions we're gonna say that it's gonna have a height of 390 a width of 640 and then finally we're taking this player and we're just gonna go ahead and assign it to our rep Okay, so now the next thing we're going to want to do is actually go ahead and build up our JSX to render all the sort of necessary elements that we need to make this work. So we're basically going to have to actually render the player. Like I just mentioned, we're going to have a div that's going to have an ID of player. And then we also have some buttons that we need to kind of render. So in other words, we kind of want to give the users the ability to sort of, you know, stop the video, play the video, or kind of load up a new video. So we kind of have to give them these elements that they can actually interact with the YouTube player. Let's render that JSX now. Okay, so so far what we have here is this is this div right over here, which we're basically passing that ID of player to the actual player constructor right up over here, which basically means that YouTube's API, this sort of API that we're, that we're importing effectively, is going to go ahead and replace this div with the actual YouTube player. We're then creating a button that's going to have a click handler that's going to go ahead and call the stop video function, which we've of course not uh, created yet. We're then going to go ahead and create another button that's going to play the video, that's going to try to call the play video function, which we still have to implement as well. And then finally, we're rendering an input and 
the, and then a button and these two are responsible for actually loading the video. So you've got a basic input where you're just going to paste in a video link and then we're going to sort of set the video or the value that we put that we actually uh, you know dropped into this input tag. We're going to go ahead and set that on state. So effectively we're going to have a variable in state called video ID that's going to represent the actual video link. And then finally we're going to have a button that's actually going to do the logic of taking that video ID out of the video link and actually loading it into the YouTube player. Let's actually go ahead and start filling in these functions. Okay, so so far what we've done right now is we've basically created a function called stop video. And what you can see here is basically doing two things. So we're gonna start with the second thing first. Basically, all it's doing is it's just gonna go ahead and call to the actual YouTube player, which we've attached to this YouTube player ref. And we're just gonna go ahead and say, go ahead and pause the video. So that's gonna pause the video for us locally. But in order for that to also happen across the wire for, for our peer, because again, we're trying to watch YouTube together. So if I'm pausing the video for myself, I want that to kind of happen for the person that I'm watching along with. So what I now need to do is send that peer message, like go ahead and say, by the way, I'm trying to pause the video and once we actually start handling the actual incoming messages we're going to see how we're actually going to you know make use of that type but the point is we're actually trying to kind of send the message over to say hey i'm trying to go ahead and pause the video now we're actually going to also do this for the play video function which is going to work exactly the same way except instead of actually sending over this sort of pause message we're going to actually go ahead and send over the uh, play message and then finally we're going to have one more function called load video which basically will load the video for us as well as send over the video id to our partner or to the person who we're having a conversation with but they can also go ahead and load the video on their side I'm going to go ahead and fill in those functions now. Okay, so basically what we've done now is we basically created a function for the play video, which as you can see, it's exactly like stop video, except we're just going to go ahead and, you know, pass the message of type play. And here we're going to go ahead and call play video. Load video is slightly more interesting because we're actually going to be passing two properties over this message. We're going to be passing the type of new video, and then we're also going to be passing along the data attribute, which is actually going to, you know, re uh, re represent the video ID, in other words, the actual video URL. And here for ourselves, we're going to go ahead and actually load that video. So we have a function that exists on this YouTube player that's called load video by ID. Now if you ever look at a YouTube URL, typically what ends up happening is you kind of have like a V equals and then that equals represents the actual video ID. So all I'm really doing is I'm just taking a sort of URL that we kind of paste into the input, kind of splitting it on the equal sign and then I'm going to basically take the, well this is meant to be the first element, not the zeroth element, which is basically going to go ahead and represent the uh, actual video ID that we can now load. So now we basically have it all set up to play on the sort of one side and we're kind of sending the messages over the peer but now we have to actually go ahead and set up those peers to receive these messages and to know how to react accordingly. Let's do that now. Okay, so basically what we've just done is we've created a function called handle data, which receives the sort of data as an argument. This data represents the message that was sent from one peer to the other peer, right? So in other words, this message can of course contain the type property at a minimum. The type property might represent that it's going to be either a new video or pause or play. And so the basic flow here is, is like this. Whenever the one peer on the one side decides to either pause or play or to load a new video, then that action will happen automatically for them on their side. And while that's also happening, their peer will go ahead and send the message over to the other peer saying, hey, I want you to kind of do the same thing either pause or play or, or load a new video and then here we're basically going to go ahead and handle that so we're going to effectively grab this data argument which represents the message that we kind of get from the other peer we're going to parse it by you know calling json to parse on it and then we're just going to go ahead and check the type and then we're going to react accordingly based on what the type is if it's a, if it says to load a new video we're going to go ahead and do that if it says to pause or play we're, we're going to you know go ahead and you know pause or play the video accordingly so now the only thing left for us to do is actually go back to our peer code and actually tell our peer that whenever they're kind of getting a message whenever actual uh, you know message is, is, is incoming, go ahead and call the handle data function. Let's do that now. Okay, so all we've just done now is we basically go, went to our add peer function as well as our create peer function. It's kind of like the two places within this code that we're actually go, um, creating peers. And we're basically uh, setting up an event handler that in the event, whenever you're kind of receiving data, go ahead and call the handle data function. This handle data function is the one that we kind of just defined right down over here. It will accept data as an argument and then go ahead and parse it and then know how to react accordingly. And that's pretty much all the code and now actually ready to kind of test to see if all works accordingly and whether we can actually watch YouTube with our friends. Let's check it out.
Okay, so here you can see we already have a video chat going. You can see that we've got the video chat right over here. We've got the second window here. You can once again see that there's already a video chat going. And in both instances, we have a YouTube player that's kind of ready to go. It's currently not playing any video because we don't have any videos loaded. So what I have now in my clipboard is one of my own videos uh, on the clipboard. And I can come over here to this uh, video link input. Go ahead and paste that uh, link right in there. I click on the load video. And now you can see it's actually loading and playing at the same time on both sides. Of course, you can hear the sound, but it is actually playing on both sides right now. Now watch this. I can actually go ahead and stop the video. It stops it for both uh, users at the same time. I can come back and play it and stop it and it all happens in sync. And so that actually does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.